charge them for committing the crime. They go to a courtroom and plead guilty because they did commit a crime. And this is about accountability. There's no fiction here. It's about, yeah, you did commit a crime, accept it, own up to it, and then let's talk about what we can do to change the district attorney for the city and county of San Francisco. Congratulations. You know, it's important, I think, to remember that she was running as the first female DA in San Francisco in our city. I'm humbled to be chosen to be the next attorney general of the state of California. You position yourself. Nobody cares about the fact that we've got a bunch of young black and brown men in prison. That argument is not working. What I suggest we do as African Americans is own this issue in law enforcement and then define it in the way that works for us because it is a myth to say that African Americans don't want law enforcement. We do. Mm -hmm. We want our grandmothers to be able to walk to church and be safe. We want our babies to be able to walk to the park and be safe. What we don't want is racial profiling. What we don't want is excessive force. That's right. What we don't want is to have our civil liberties and civil rights be stripped. But we do want law enforcement. So let's define it in the way that works for us by saying, I want community policing. I want a police department that works in my neighborhood and in my community that reflects the mores and the culture and respects my grandmother again when they walk in to talk to her. I want a system of, of, of accountability in the criminal justice system that says law enforcement needs to own crime prevention as much as it talks about long sentences. Because nationally, only 18% of serious crime results in an arrest. Of course, my mother is here. Uh, mommy, where are you? My sister Maya, my brother-in-law Tony, we could not be here without the work of every one of you, and so I just want to tell you that this is a celebration not just about me, but about all of us, and about our great city, and the work that we've been doing, and the work we will continue to do representing the people. So we are here as our voice for justice. All of us here are our voice for justice. We're going to go on in the next four years and continue to do this great work. We're going to get better and better. We've still got more work to do. I want everyone to have fun tonight from my office. Walk home. Don't drive. And then let's get back to work tomorrow. But everyone deserves a pat on the back. And for all of you who have supported me over the last four years, I thank you, I thank you, I thank you. So let's just continue. Have fun and party. Party. There. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. There's a connection, for example, between public education and public safety. We've been talking about why a chief law enforcement officer of a major city in this country is concerning herself with the fact that we have high truancy rates among African American and Latino children and that by the way, there's no coincidence between those numbers and who ends up in our county jails. We've been talking about why a community should put its resources into thinking about and prioritizing what is happening with youth in our community that are living in high violence communities and are experiencing post-traumatic stress disorder as a result of the bullets and the gunfire that they hear every night and why that is relevant to their behavior in the classroom the next day and four and five years hence when they're slinging drugs on the corner. Affairs in the state of California, we know it's uh, not a pretty scene uh, at present. What are you looking at as you run? Well, I'm looking at California as being the place of my birth and in many ways the place that is the source of innovation for our country. You know, I believe in that old adage, so goes California, goes the rest of the country. So in, in that way, you know, we have Silicon Valley, we have produced great things that have changed the way that America lives. So in many ways, we are still a very great state facing some of the best of times. But it's no joke and no, no secret that we also are on the verge of bankruptcy. And in that way, facing probably some of the worst of times. And um, I, but I, it, that being said, I believe in, in that old concept that you know, in times of great crisis, there are also great opportunities. And I think um, our situation in terms of our economic situation is forcing us to critically look at the way we've been doing business and evaluate whether even when we had more money, were we engaged in good and productive systems. And your book focuses on crime. The book is called Smart on Crime. Right. What does it do um, to our ability to prosecute criminals, to... Um... Dramatically higher conviction rates for violent crime. Our justice system needs drastic repair. Early intervention leaves room in our prisons for the violent criminals who should be there. 
I did it in San Francisco. As Attorney General, I can do it across California. Time to play offense. It's time to stop making apologies and start making progress. It's time to stand up for our basic principles, to say yes on health care, yes for freedom and individuals' right to marry, yes for workers to collectively bargain, yes for a woman to make a choice for her own body, and yes for a path for citizenship for immigrants in this country. I thank you for the honor and privilege to be here. So let's get right down to business. We are here because we love our country. And we firmly believe in the American ideal that our country should work for everyone. That ideal is written into our laws, the rules of the road, that create a level playing field in this country. Those are the rules I became Attorney General to uphold. And those are the rules Mitt Romney would have us roll back. I think we can all take a great sense of pride in who we are as California Democrats. California Democrats consistently every year face incredible challenges and rise to meet those challenges in a way that really inspires not only working people every day in our state but across the country. I talked a little bit about So Goes California Goes the rest of the country and when we think about it on what is going to be the outcome and, and hopefully a, a positive and good outcome of Prop 8, when we win that battle, that California battle, same-sex couples throughout the country will win. When we're looking at the issue of what we need to do around immigration reform, one out of two Californians has, is either foreign-born or has a parent who's foreign-born. We have the largest number of undocumented immigrants. We want reform in the state of California, and we're going to be, I think, a leader, and, and time will show, in pushing through reform across the country, doing just what is right in terms of being consistent with our principles, not only as Democrats, but as Americans. Let's wake up our neighbors, our families, and our communities, because we know so goes California, so goes the rest of the nation. Let's be proud. We Californians and we California Democrats aren't about playing the waiting game. Let's be proud. Under the leadership of the great Jerry Brown, we didn't wait on Washington to do the right thing by our immigrant communities. Instead, we, everyone in this room, helped pass the California Dream Act, giving every hardworking student an opportunity to succeed. Uh, Scalia wrote in his dissent, you know, California does not count as part of the West and that the court is not representative. Of course, it was written by somebody from Sacramento. You know, what did you think about that portion of his dissent, that reference to California there? You know, um, don't hate the player, hate the game. <laughs> that um, unfortunately um, Justice Scalia has, um, has I think, um, caused many people to, to, to question um, the dignity of the court when he, when he makes statements such as the statements he've made, he's made in connection with this case. And that's unfortunate. It has been a race to anger, a race to blame, a race to fan the flames of nativism in our country. And then, of course, there's the big promise. They say they will make America great again. Well, in my mind, that statement begs an obvious question. Again, for whom? Tell me exactly which part of the past they want to bring back. Because that's exactly what they're talking about. They want to go back. They want to go back on civil rights and voting rights. 
They want to deny the franchise instead of protecting the vote. Democrats, we know the stakes are too high. We are not going back. Let's hold these Republicans accountable in their districts. Because we all know if you vote for people to lose their health care, then you need to lose your job. It's simple. Let's keep up the fight for our students. They need our help. They have barely begun, and we have barely begun in this president's first year, and already he is reversing basic protections for people with student loans while padding the pockets of predatory debt collectors. That's why I am proud to co-sponsor with Bernie Sanders the College for All Act. Uh, there was a, an interesting moment during the speech uh, when President Trump uh, mentioned that black unemployment is at its lowest level uh, in, in years, um, which is true. Uh, and the cameras uh, cut to the uh, shot of the Congressional Black Caucus. Uh, the members were, were sitting, uh, and most of them were not uh, applauding. Um, can you help explain that to, to viewers who might not understand uh, why so, so few people were applauding that notion that black unemployment is, is down so much? Well, um, and I, I didn't—I wasn't watching on TV. I was there in person, and I'll tell you that um, many people, including members of the Congressional Black Caucus, were not applauding. And probably because we all know that the way that he should have made that statement is at the end of that statement he should have said, "Thank you, President Obama," because truly, what happened is that it was because of the priorities of the previous administration that we saw a five point drop in unemployment among the black population of the United States and that trend has continued but frankly actually last year by only one percent um, so I'm sure that had a lot to do with the response by people who actually know what happened and what led to it I think that um, it, it's unfortunate that we have someone on the stage who is attempting to be the Democratic nominee for President of the United States, who during the Obama administration spent four years full time on Fox News criticizing President Obama. That's who ridiculous. Has spent full time, That's who ridiculous. has spent full time criticizing people on this stage as affiliated with the Democratic Party. When Donald Trump was elected, not even sworn in, buddied up to Steve Bannon to get a meeting with Donald Trump in the Trump Tower, fails to call a war criminal by what he is as a war criminal, and then spends full time during the course of this campaign, again, criticizing the Democratic Party. What we need on the stage on, in the November is someone who has the ability to win. And by that, we need someone on that stage who has the ability to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Donald Trump and someone who has the ability to rebuild the Obama coalition and bring the party and the nation together. I believe I am that candidate. Hey, everybody. It's me, Kamala. So before I go on stage later tonight, I want to talk about the importance of voting. I know many of you plan to vote this year, but amidst the excitement and enthusiasm for this election, you've also heard about obstacles and misinformation and folks making it harder for you to cast your ballot. So I think we need to ask ourselves, why don't they want us to vote? Why is there so much effort to silence our voices? And the answer is because when we vote, things change. When we vote, things get better. When we vote, we address the need for all people to be treated with dignity and respect in our country. So each of us needs a plan, a voting plan. Joe and I want to make sure you're prepared. If you text VOTE to 30330, we'll help you come up with your plan and remember deadlines and get ready to vote in your community. The president wanted people to remain calm. Well, let's get so to that. No, but Susan, I, this is important. Susan, I, I, and I, I want to add, but if, Mr. Vice President, I'm speaking. I have to I'm speaking. In.
Yeah, yeah, let's yeah. talk about packing the court then. Let's talk about the Please. fact. Yeah, I'm, I'm about to. Four hundred thousand dollars a year. He said he's going to repeal the Trump tax cuts. Uh, Mr. Vice President, I'm speaking. Well, wait, wait. I'm speaking. It'd be important if you said the truth. Yes. If you don't mind letting me finish, we can Please. then have a conversation. Okay. It is painful to watch. It is painful to watch what is happening to innocent people in Ukraine who just want to live in their own country and have pride in themselves as Ukrainians, who want to be home speaking the language they know, going to the church that they know, raising their children in the community where their families have lived for generations, and by the millions now are having to flee with nothing but a backpack. The threats we face as a nation are great. Threats to our freedom, threats to our very democracy. And we need to speak truth about that. Imagine if we lost our democratic majority in the Congress. Republican Party leaders have made it clear they want to ban abortion nationwide. And they won't stop there. Marriage equality will be on the line. Contraception will be on the line. Without a Democratic majority in Congress, who knows what other rights they will come after. This is a pivotal moment in our nation's history. This election is how we rise to meet it. Balance. And then the outcome will be fair. And isn't that what we're talking about in this here election? We're saying we just want fairness. We want dignity for all people. We want to recognize the right all people have to freedom and liberty, to make choices, especially those that are about heart and home, and not have their government telling them what to do. Our campaign is about saying we trust the people. We see the people. We know the people. You know one of the things I love about our country? Mm-hmm. We are a nation of people who believe yes, in those ideals yes. that were foundational mm. to what made us so special as a nation. On, right? We believe in those ideals. Yes. And the sisters and brothers of labor have always fought for those ideals. Oh, yeah. Always fought for those ideals. Yeah. And we know... We are a work in progress. We haven't yet quite reached all of those ideals, but we will die trying because we love our country and we believe in who we are. And that's what our campaign is about. We love our country. We believe in our country. We believe in each other. We believe in the collective. We're not falling for these folks who are trying to divide us, trying to separate us, trying to pull us apart. That's not where the strength lies. And there is that. And so I say to all the members of UAW and Sean Fain is the first who I talked to about this. I am so deeply honored as a lifelong supporter of union labor, for Tim and I to have the endorsement of UAW. And it is my promise to everyone here, when I am president, we will continue our fight for working families of America. Including to raise the minimum wage, and eliminate taxes on tips for service and hospitality workers. Dear those who munch on this channel, yes, that's you, 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 and you over there. Your mission, should you choose to accept, is to get yourself to invite more people along to the 24-7 Eyes channel. 
please get them to subscribe any day between Monday to Sunday before 10 p.m. November 5th. For daily roasts with a political option and extra room for those wanting Dems on board, there will be gossip, banter, and funny bits to be shared every day as the British outsider Tony delivers non-stop what he's found round from America's political bag. This message will self-destruct and end in three, two, one.